the Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of the Pit Stop, where we are here to hang out and talk about what's going on in the wonderful world of sim racing uh, this year. It's already February 2021. I can't believe how fast time is ticking by. Uh, I guess when you do a weekly show and you only do four a month, uh, <laughs> at least as far as the pit stop goes, that things really do start to accelerate. I think another big reason why, and you guys haven't quite seen the fruit of the labor just yet. Uh, behind the scenes, me and the Sim Pit crew have been working really hard on um, a bunch of things, on reviews, on new videos, getting more content out, uh, aligning our racing efforts, all of that stuff. We have a whole team now working on all this stuff. And uh, I think that that's why time is really flying for me. We have so many things going on in the in the back and, and you guys will start to see uh, the benefits of all that work coming up very, very, very soon. We have some videos coming out uh, shortly and a whole series of videos. So it should be pretty exciting times around the sim pit coming soon. So uh, I noticed I didn't put up my thumbnail today. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Normally we start with the thumbnail today. We're just starting with our top story. And that is that iRacing is getting ready for 2021 as well. So the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series is going to return on the 12th, uh, or for the 12th season on February 8th. So we're just a few days, three days away from the kickoff in this. Uh, looks like they have $330,000 on the line for the series, $100,000 going to the champion. So uh, here we're looking at their pretty lengthy race schedule one two three four five six seven eight nine ten looks like they're running about 20 seats races or so for the season uh all races will be broadcast live on enascar.com and iracing.com live uh streams will kick off at six o'clock pacific time my time again on the eighth is when things kick off for them uh, also, they did a, a post here showing off the pairings. So we've had some driver or team changes in the offseason. We have some new teams in the series, some new drivers, new faces in the series. And if you are interested, I'm not going to go through all of them, but just going through 23XI will be the drivers Mitchell DeJong and Kagan Leahy. Clint Boyer Racing will be Ryan Doucette and Blade Witt. Elliot Sadler Motorsports will be Ashton Crowder and Garrett Maines, and the list goes on. Jim Beaver, Joe Gibbs, JR Motorsports, so on, so on, so on. So here are all the drivers that will be competing starting up in just a few days here uh, with $100,000. One of these guys on this list here is going to be $100,000 richer after 20 races. So uh, that should be exciting. It's been getting, It's been great racing all along. Porsche making a little announcement about another weekend, another highlight in the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup by iRacing. Uh, welcome PMSC winner Larry Tenvord as our special guest among Dan Suzuki TV and DePilio F1 for the next All-Star Races tune-in. So uh, anyway, a little congratulations and announcing race number four coming up fairly soon. Uh, what else? Uh, that's it for my racing. Assetto Corsa. This is kind of news to me, or a little bit of news. I guess we kind of knew, but now, uh, surprise! This just posted on yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, yeah. Uh, surprise! The British GT Pack DLC is coming to PC on February 10th. While you wait, take a look at Olton Park. So, the British GT Pack includes three iconic circuits, obviously Olton Park being one of them. 40 new liveries and 70 drivers. Dedicated championship season to that series as well. There's some Mercedes at Olden Park. And there we have the McLaren. And another shot of a McLaren. And this is the British GT Pack. Olden Park looking pretty good in the wet there. Uh, more shots of the same. And then we have these shots. Ah, it's Snedderton. Snedderton. Um, and I think that's everything there. So that's great news coming from them. Uh, R Factor with another competition system blog. So it seems like the last three uh, dev updates from R Factor have been really dedicated to this competition system, which, given time, will be a game changer. Given time, this, this will change... Uh, the hierarchy of sims this will change uh how r factor is per perceived this will change uh the 
the main thing that I've had iRacing with an advantage over the other Sims for many, many years. So uh, a little Q of A, Q and A. So question after qualifying, I was eight out of eight, but only four of us were given place on the results. Anyway, uh, by Dave Henry with Paul Jeffrey doing the answering of the question. So you can go through that and find out and uh, maybe find out if there are any questions you have about their competition system. I know our good friend Mitchie Hoyer has been playing with it a lot and having pretty good results. Um, in our factor this week, we also had the Formula E event going on. Uh, Ollie Pakla, my buddy Ollie, was running in it, and I know how he did, but I don't know the full results. Spoiler alert, when I flip scenes here, we're going to actually see the results, the finishing results from the last race in that Formula E event. So if you don't want to know, if you're going to watch it, the link is right here, and the link to everything we're talking about is in the description of the show below. So all you have to do is scroll down, you'll find it. Uh, but here we go. Oh, I already did it, so let's pause that one. And let's go to this one where we have Jajowski winning the race, Rasmussen in second, and Kevin Siggy in third. Is that Martin Car Carroll in fourth, uh, Stefanko in fifth, Pacola finishing in eighth. That's my buddy. Anyway, you can see all the big names, really big names in this Formula E competition. A lot of these guys were actually in. I mean, looking at these names, I can tell you right now that I think uh, uh, I know Bono Hui, I know Pacola. I know uh, Carol were all in that original Visa Vegas event way back when. Project Cars, look at this. Look at this. You got you to gotta squeeze your eyes. You would have missed it if you were there and you weren't looking carefully. But Project Cars 3 answered a post. Tim Pennington, don't know who that is, 23 hours ago posted Project Cars game. Can you tell us when the next DLC and the update are due? It's been a while. Well, they posted right back, literally right back an hour later project cars posted sit tight the next dlc pack for project cars 3 is on its way that's all we've got this is it this one little quote from them right there but sure enough there is project cars 3 content and perhaps an update on the way coming to us from formula one esport the virtual british grand prix uh lineup announces williams duo russell and latifi return we just talked about that a couple weeks ago this is a hundred thousand dollar charity Prize Alex Albon, a Red Bull, will be there. Um, Red Bull Junior driver Liam Lawson's there. Enzo Fittipaldi is there. So a lot of big names in this charity event going on. And the race will be broadcast Sunday the 7th. So this Sunday the 7th on the official Formula One YouTube channel if you want to check it out. So once again, Formula One, the game, working hand-in-hand -hand directly with Formula One, the series. Staying with Codemasters and looking over to Dirt 5. We're speeding towards Dirt 5's first content drop of 2021. Looking forward to locking in and revealing what we have in store. So just a glimpse. New cars, new playgrounds, new playground of objects, new career events, new tracks, new liveries, more custom livery options, etc. So we'll, we'll to stay tuned and find out when they give us a little more tease, a little bit more information on what's going to be in that next update. Probably not the update that makes it more like Dirt 2, huh? That's, that's the downside. Dirt 5 update's going to make it more like Dirt 5 and less like Dirt 2, I'm assuming. Uh, GT Sport made an announcement. The exhibition, excuse me, the 2021 exhibition series begins on Saturday, February 27th. So that's more racing that we're going to be able to tune in for and watch the best of the best in our sim racing world go at it. Switching over to WRC, WRC 9, they have done a PC update. The new update, 1.0.4.5.4, uh, is now available to download in the Epic Game Store. This update should fix the error number 11. Error number 11, I guess the other, uh, 1 through 10, we're not concerned about so much, but error number 11, we've, we've addressed. Some players have encountered while trying to use online features of the game. So a little fix there. Uh, Automobilista 2, they have their latest dev blog. It just came out, and there's a full write-up here at uh, Race Him Central. Automobilista 2, January, uh, it's actually a January roadmap posted in the beginning of February. That's what we're used to. Uh, Reese had posted last night. Uh, current plans forecast two to three new cars, one track per month in 2021. All right, so there you go. 2020 season passes will cover all released content in 2021. Spa 93 is in progress. There's an image below. We'll go check that out. Group C, Sauber, Mercedes C9. And the Porsche 962 coming in February update. 
That is the big one. 1999 GM, GM Omega stock car coming. Oh, yeah, I saw shots of that. Look at this thing. Look at this. Gotta like that. That would be fun car to race. Oh, there it is. The Porsche, 9, Porsche 962 and the Sauber C9 Mercedes. It was this Rothman's paint job that I think made me such a lover of this particular car. I mean, I'd always been a Porsche fan. The 962 is such a beautiful car. Um, but that Mercedes C9, oh my God, I can't wait to drive those. Janetta's and somewhere we have some Spa 93 as well. Okay, so good stuff coming from Automobilista too. Uh, Thrustmaster with a post here talking about great news for T880, T150, and T300 users. They all now work with PS5 games. So if you're on that lower line, mid to lower line Thrustmaster, chances are it works on your PS5 now. Um, if you're on the high end, I'm not so sure. Fanatec making an announcement. They're proud partners of Rage, Esport, and Ro Roman Grosjean. Amazing to welcome real racing pilots to sim racing. So it looks like now that Redline is no longer with Fanatec, it looks like now it's Rage Esport and Roman Grosjean that will be the in-house team of Fanatec. And we'll have to see how that pans out for them in 2021. Hard to beat Redline, but that's a good team they've now got. Uh, McLaren showing off their uh, NASCAR paint schemes for the year. Just thought I'd take a quick look at the shadow paint job. Pretty looking... Good looking car. Definitely a good looking race car. So that's the car you'll be seeing out on track from the new McLaren Shadow NASCAR eSport team on iRacing um, with drivers B. Reynolds and A. Bose 21. So, and then lastly, last bits of news and then just a little bit of sim pit stuff and then we'll move on for the day. Euro Truck Simulator 1.4 Open Beta. Uh, with all the excitement surrounding the upcoming updates for our trucking titles, we are happy to share with you that the 1.40 open beta for Euro Truck 2 is now ready to be tested and tried out by our community. They have been talking about this 1.4 open beta for, I don't know, six months? It's This is not new news. It being available is the big news. New visual lighting system um, and some other features. Uh, Viva La France, new cities. Uh, maybe one of the most significant. This is something they've been very much plugging away at. This is a very big update, and I am going to immediately have to start talking to some of my trucker friends to find out how it's working out, uh, and if it's good, and if it's worth me getting back in there and trying out again. And that takes us to some sim rigs, some sim pit business, and we'll bring this show to a close. Relatively short show today, which is great. This is about the tempo. This is about the amount of time that the pit stop is supposed to take. I think we're finally getting there. Anyway, let's check out some rigs. This was posted by Sim Decals. It's his goal to be an epic dad. Nothing else matters. Love seeing his son embrace the hobby. There you go. Is that Coda? That's Coda up on their wall, isn't it? What other track? How many tra how many tracks do you know that have twenty corners or more? Coda, and then obviously the super longs. You know your your Nordschleife. Does Spa have twenty? Uh, does Le Mans have twenty? Not sure. I'm gonna have to check my track maps. Anyway, great to see a youngster out there. Great to see a dad ded dedicated to his kids' sim racing efforts. I got to tell you, getting your kid in sim racing is gonna be a lot cheaper than getting him into karting. And maybe even lead to the same amount of opportunities in the long run. You never know. Check this rig out. This is by him, Carthy. Finally finished his rig. It's been a long time coming. This is a beauty of a setup. I got to tell you, this looks super duper clean. He's got it up on a platform. You know how much I love platform. And he has those really cool giant casters uh, on those arms. I'm, I'm very impressed with the way. I want to take a better close-up look at this rig. Look at this rig. Look at this monitor stand. Look at this platform. Um, this is amazing work. Look at how nice those monitors lined up. Uh, finished his rig. It's been a long time. That must have taken ages. That is a lot of work and a lot of clean work. And, and I got to tell you, that I can't imagine that's a first effort. Yeah, he set, states this like it's his first rig effort uh, ever. And I just think, wow, if that's your first rig, you are really accomplished. Now check this out. This is by Vite Racing. He's got his Logitech wheel on there. 
$100 F1 style sim racing chair. Look at this. This is like a total Deathmobile Formula One style. I even like the way he has the calf pads or heel pads, depending on your length. <laughs> anyway, fine work there. Maybe that gives you motivation or inspiration on a rig designed for you. And then check this one out. It's simple, but it gets his job done. He's got his gaming chair. He's got his wheel stand. And I'm guessing by the monitor position, he's running in VR. I think I see a VR unit. In there somewhere uh he's got that cool uh apollo rocket uh i always wanted to get one of those anyway nice looking setup on the minimalistic side now finally let's look at this one this was posted by hose h-o-z sensei and this is another one of those harry potter rigs we're gonna call them the harry potter rig under the stairs uh you don't need a lot of space to sim race nowadays do you especially in vr this one's not even in vr but you can see him squeezing his little play seat challenge into the little cubby hole behind or under the stairs, wherever it fits. That'll do it. And next up, that takes us to this week's Pit Pass. If you want to find out how all the Sim, Sim Pit community racing for the week played out, you're going to want to head over to the Sim Pit right here on YouTube. And this week on the 2nd, Devin put out this week's Pit Pass, letting you know where all of the racing, whether it be the rally racing whether it be the oval racing, whether it be the road racing, all of the racing that goes on for the Sim Pit, you're going to find all the results of who won and how things played out there. And then that takes me to our league racing. So tonight is the oval race, our ARCA series. However, my internet is still not good. I hope I can upload this show even. I probably will not be able to make tonight's race, let alone stream it. I'm hoping everything is resolved and that by Sunday I can stream the road race. So tonight, the Oval Boys will be at North Wilkesboro, and I'm sure you'll find a few of our crew members streaming that race without me. And in fact, I believe Devin Booth is streaming that tonight on Simpit Live. I'm going to talk about channels here in one second. And then finally, the GP, uh, the GTE series. Those guys, uh, Sunday, will be at Silverstone. Silverstone, my least favorite track in the world. Gonzalo Perone leading the way with 180 points over Randall White. I find myself in fourth. And in the Oval Things, it's Mark Michkowski over Kevin Burrows with a 13-point advantage. Um, so with all that said, that takes me to a couple of things. I do want to make a few announcements. Number one, like I said, we've been doing a lot of work and making a lot of changes. Uh, Devin Booth has been doing more and more work here on the show. So what we are doing is doing a little shuffling around. Uh, this channel, the YouTube channel, it is what it is. We are going to start pushing more and more reviews to this channel. Outside of the pit stop, it probably won't be a lot of uh, live content. It's going to be mainly reviews. Now, what used to be the Sim Pit Crew channel is now called Sim Pit Live on YouTube. That is where I will be doing all of my personal racing. So it looks like starting Sunday morning at Silverstone in the GTE race is where I will start doing that. And that allows Devin to take over the Simpit Live channel at Twitch and fill in there with some live feed as well. So what you will find is live racing is either done at Twitch Live, mainly done by Devin, and Simpit Live, mainly done by me. And then we will have some other stri streamers stepping into the action as well. We're going to have guys like Dave Danger Blair uh, putting out edited content and things like that. So be sure to check out all of our Simpit channels. I'll put links to the description of the show. And you can always hit me up on our Discord. If you type in exclamation mark Discord, you can come into our Discord channel, talk to me or any of the, the crew team. And that takes me to uh, a round of thank yous. So I kept mentioning us. I kept mentioning we, the team. Uh, I need to give a round of thank yous. And I need you guys to really hear, this, hear me out on this one. Uh, obviously, I am the Simpit. But without the help that I get from my direct team, we wouldn't have racing going on. We wouldn't get as much shows done. We wouldn't be as organized as we are heading into 2021. So right now, I want to give a very big thank you. I want to give a huge thank you to Devin Booth, who has really stepped up his efforts for the Simpit. I want to give a huge thank you to Amir Assad. If it wasn't for Amir Assad, there would be no racing for the Simpit community. It would just be the show. Thanks to Amir, we have a great variety of racing going on 
I also want to thank Dave Danger Blair. Dave has been creating content. He's been part of our advisory board. I want to thank Mark Michkowski, who also has been a race director and part of our advisory board. The reason I'm thanking all these guys is this week I sent out a little care package to the team. It's really important to me when you're a team that you feel like you're part of a team. And so you can see I'm wearing my normal Simpit Racing Team logo. But what I did was I did a variation of the logo. So here is a fresh t-shirt with the new Simpit Crew logo. And I've sent this t-shirt to Dave, to Mark, to Amir and Devin. I've also sent them a sweatshirt. And the sweatshirt, same graphic. We've got a Simpit logo on the front. These are not available to the public. This is the official crew team wear. And the reason I am showing you this cool sweatshirt and this cool t-shirt that I sent them is I could not be more grateful to these guys. And what I need all of you to do out there is I need you to understand just how important Amir, Devin, Mark, and Dave are to the team. And the next time, the next time you're on the track with any of those guys, the next time you're in our Discord, maybe you're watching a live stream by Amir or by Devin or commenting on a video by Dave or in one of our race rooms and you see Mark, if you out there are a fan of the Sim Pit, if you, if you like to give me, if you would like to do something for me, you be sure to find one of those guys. You find all four of them and you thank them. You thank them because if it weren't for Amir, Devin, Mark, and Dave, we would not be the team that we are. We would not be as organized as we are for 2021. Just wait till you see how much we get done coming up in the near future. And it is in great part to that team. So please go out of your way to thank them because they are my right-hand man, my left-hand man, my left foot, my right foot. Without them, I couldn't walk. Without them, I couldn't type. Without them, we couldn't produce the content we are. So thank you. Thank you, Devin, Amir, Mark, and Dave. And all of you, be sure to thank them as well. Anyway, that is going to do it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this kicks off your weekend great. I hope you have some great weekends scheduled for your own racing. I know I do. I can't wait to get my internet working at full, full level so I can start streaming again. That's going to do it. Get out there, do some sim racing. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.